Hey everyone, this is Dr. Zach Kui here, Performance Sport and Spine, and in today's video we'll be discussing patellofemoral pain syndrome, more commonly known as anterior knee pain. So who gets this? Well, it's more common in young people, people that are physically active, and it seems like it's a little more likely to happen in females than males. So what causes this condition? Well, normally there's an increase in knee loading, such as running or jumping, there may be quad strength deficits, and there may be dynamic valgus under close chain movements. So how does this condition commonly present? Well, typically there's pain behind the kneecap and there's some diffuse anterior knee pain. It may be hard to kind of pinpoint. There's some crepitus, which is just joint popping or clicking, and then it's worse when you load the knee. So the process of standing or sitting or prolonged sitting can aggravate it. It's rarely swollen. When standing, people will keep their knees straight and then often wearing heels will aggravate it. So there are two other conditions that need to be ruled out. The first is patellar tendinopathy. Now this is typically reproducible with tenderness over the palpation of the patellar tendon and then pain or weakness with knee extension. And the second is the Hoffa fat pad syndrome, which is a little fat bursa located underneath your patellar tendon. Now this is typically very localized, worse with direct compression, and it is swollen. So with this condition, postures and movements that like keeping the knee fully extended can be problematic, so people will often keep the knee slightly bent when they're standing. In addition, long periods of standing and walking can be painful. Here's a list of a few different diagnoses. If you want, you can pause and look at the detailed list. So understanding this condition is kind of an overuse issue is very important, and some discomfort's okay. Research has shown that pain two to three out of 10 that calms down within 24 hours and doesn't exacerbate is probably safe. In addition, you gotta gradually load the knee more and more as your symptoms calm down and your knee tolerates better stress. In addition, there's more than just biomechanical factors. There's lots of other things that can either increase our load or decrease our capacity. Here we list different things that you may wanna look at and address. If there's a big change in something, like you're sleeping way worse, or works way stressful, that can influence this pain and may need to be addressed or at least acknowledged. So again, don't think it's just that your knee is getting overworked. Pain's complex and there's lots of things going on. So now we're covering some great exercises for this condition. And we recommend that you start with the more hip dominant ones initially, and then as the knee calms down and the legs get stronger, gradually shift to the more knee dominant ones. And this will be different for each person, but typically people find three to four times a week, two sets of six to 12 reps is the best, but it will be needed tailored to the individual and your current symptoms. Well, the glute bridge is a great exercise for this. So on your back with your knees bent and your feet flat against the floor, you're gonna use your buttocks muscles to drive your hips up towards the ceiling and come down. Again, you wanna feel tension in your buttocks or your glutes, not your low back. You may need to tinker with where your feet are or the width to kind of decrease the stress on your knee to make it more comfortable. We recommend two sets of 10 reps three to four times a week. We have a video of how to do the glute bridge right that we'll put in the links below. So a deadlift with a weight like a barbell or a kettlebell, we're gonna do the deadlift. So you're gonna press your hips back, dropping the weight, keeping a vertical shin, and then pull our hips forward as we push our shoulders back. Again, think of horizontal railroad tracks, pushing your hips back, lower the weight, keep good tension in the torso, and then pull your hips forward as you pull your shoulders back. We recommend two sets of six to 10 reps, three or four times a week, and then increase the weight as tolerated. So next are the lunges, and often people tolerate backwards lunges a little bit better because it's more hip dominant, and then we can transition to anterior lunges or forward lunges as the knees calm down. So for the backwards lunge, stand against a wall or a pole so if you need some stability, and you're gonna just step back with one leg and lunge straight down. Initially, we recommend kind of reducing the range of motion, and then as you get stronger and your symptoms allow, increasing the range of motion. We recommend two sets of eight to 10 reps three to four times a week. As you get stronger and the symptoms decrease, you can do isometric lunges, just standing in place, or eventually you can increase to anterior or forward lunges. Now again, as you do this, you want to step forward and try to lunge straight down rather than lunging and kind of leaning forward as that puts excess stress on the knee. So band and knee extension. So anchor the band behind you and put the strap around your ankle. On a step, make mild tension at rest. Contracting your anterior part of your leg, your quad, straighten your knee fully and then bring back to starting position. Again, as you contract your quad, you should feel gentle tension over your anterior leg, and you should think about pulling your kneecap up towards your hip. We're gonna do two sets of 10 to 12 reps. To increase the difficulty, get a stiffer band, or pull the band farther back behind you. To decrease the difficulty, you may just start with just your body weight or a less stiff band. If you need to, you can use a different band like we demonstrate here, that's smaller, or an ankle weight will also work. And in knee flexion, anger one aspect of the band away from you. Place the other aspect around your ankle. Pull your foot under your buttocks in a seated position. You should feel gentle dull tension on the posterior leg or your hamstring. Again, try to make full range of motion and straighten your leg all the way and bring your foot back as far as possible. 
we recommend two sets of 10 to 12 reps. To increase the difficulty, get a stiffer band or anchor farther away from you. To decrease the difficulty, use a less stiff band or just your body weight. So the first exercise is the wall sit. With your back against the wall and your feet firmly on the ground, you're gonna squat down until you feel like it's a tolerance amount of strength or your pain is at a two or three that we talked about and hold for 10 seconds. We'll do this two to three times and then gradually increase the duration and the range of motion as your symptoms allow. So for squats, we recommend putting a chair or a step behind you to kind of give you a sense of comfortability and stability. Again, we're gonna push our hips back, squat down into the step, and then stand upright. Again, we recommend two sets of six to 10 reps three times a week. Now, if this is a little too challenging, what we can do is put heel lifts under our heels to kind of decrease the tension, or you can do a ball wall squat and then progress to the normal squat. Step up, have a small step or chair in front of you, place one foot up and then with the foot that's elevated, drive up with that leg, bring your other foot up and then stand back down the floor. Now again, try to stand upright as much as you can, emphasize the quad. If it's a little bit too uncomfortable, what you can do is place your knee there and kind of lean forward, emphasize the glute more and then stand up like that. And then as time goes on and the symptoms calm down, you can transition to the more upright we recommend two sets of eight to 10 reps three times a week. So two other things that we can utilize is McConley taping for the knee and then custom foot orthotics. Now again, these are probably more of a short-term temporary solution and should only be used when you're kind of managing your training volume and then strengthening the knee. For today, we hope you found this video helpful and educational. If you did find it beneficial, please like the video and subscribe to our channel.